Okay, so this video is on Chapter 3 of Advanced Accounting, where we are dealing with um, the consolidated financial statements um, subsequent to the acquisition. So in Chapter 2, we did the balance sheet at acquisition date, because that was the only thing that was impacted. Now we're a year later, or possibly two years, or three years, you know, we're after that date, and the companies have had income, they've paid dividends, they need to record depreciation. There's things that have to be um, recorded in order to account for those transactions. Um, so then that's what we're going to do. So now we'll have the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of retained earnings to adjust in our consolidating entries. So the problem says the parent company acquires its sub on January 1, 2013 by exchanging 55,000 shares of its common stock, which has a market value of $40 per share for all of the outstanding voting shares of the, acquire, the acquiree. So then if we first start with that, what's our purchase price? Our purchase price is going to be the um, 55,000 shares times $40. So that's $2,200,000. Okay, so that's our first step. Um, then as we read through the rest of it, it tells us that the parent values all of the subsidiary's assets and liabilities at an amount equaling their book value, except for a building, which is included in property, plant, and equipment that it feels is undervalued by $200,000 a year. It will be depreciated for 20 years over straight line methods, so that's going to be $10,000 a year that we're going to have to figure in. It also feels um, that there's an unrecorded license agreement that they value at $250,000 that will be amortized over 10 years. So then that's going to be $25,000 in amortization. And then there's an unrecorded customer list owned by the subsidiary that the parent values at $300,000. And that will be amortized also over 10 years for $30,000 a year. Then if there's any other difference, it's going to go to Goodwill, and then they give us the financial statements. So my next step is I go to the financial statements. Again, now they're a little bigger. We've got the income statement, statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. But my step here is to still go back and look at the equity accounts. So we say less book value of the sub. So I go to my common stock, my paid in capital, and then now the only thing that's different from the prior chapter is that we're going to go to the beginning of the year retained earnings. So that's what that BOY is for. It's not boy, but it's beginning of the year retained earnings. So if I go to the balance sheet, I go to the subsidiary column, I pull the common stock, it's 130000 I pull the paid in capital. It's 162500 and then my beginning of the year retained earnings. So that is not what's in the balance sheet. What's in the balance sheet is my end of the year retained earnings. So the beginning of the year retained earnings is um, in the statement of retained earnings. So if we go over to the statement of retained earnings, it says the BOY retained earnings is $1,007,500. Now then I'll subtotal those. I'll carry that subtotal over on that line. So 130 plus 162,500 plus 7,500 gives me 1,300,000. So that's my book value. So I'm going to subtract that from the price that they paid. And that gives me a 900000 acquisition accounting premium. So again, I'm going to abbreviate that AAP, but that AAP stands for acquisition accounting premium. And then we map out, well, what does that $900,000 relate to? So it told us, if we go back to the problem again, it said that um, the building was undervalued by 200000 And then it told us that um, 
The license agreement was undervalued by 250000 And then it told us that there was a customer list for 300000 And then it said anything additional would be to Goodwill. So I'm going to add these up. So this total is 750000 I need it to be 900000 so Goodwill is what my plug is to make this tie out. And then now I've got my whole $900,000. Okay, then they also gave us the depreciation and the amortization. So then, um, With the building, it was $20,000 a year. With the license agreement, it was $25,000 a year. And then with our customer list, it was $30,000. We don't depreciate goodwill or amortize goodwill. We check to see for impairment later. So then that doesn't impact our entry there. So then now we've kind of mapped out. I always do this as my first step. I mean, even if the problem isn't asking you to specifically do that, you kind of need to do it to build your journal entries properly. So then these three entries here are going to be my E entry. These entries here are going to be my A entry. And then this entry here is going to be my D entry. So then we're going to want to remember those um, as we go to build our entry. Now the other thing that we have to consider now as we're moving into the next year is our income of the uh, subsidiary company. Because when the, when the parent is following their equity method of accounting, they are recording equity income for their interest of the subsidiary company. So um, that is another thing we have to calculate. Maybe I'm going to try to squeeze it in just right here because um, I, I don't have a ton of board space in the camera. But if we go like this and I squeeze it in right here, we've got the subs net income. And the subs net income, I'm going to pick up off of their income statement. So if I go to their income statement, it tells me the subs net income is $273,000. Now, if we did not have any of these acquisition accounting premium entries, then the parent would just record all of that as their equity income. But because we have these additional depreciation and amortization entries that need to be made, we have to adjust the sub's net income for those. They're, they're not on the sub's books, so they are not recording that depreciation. But because the parent is valuing those in the acquisition, we have to now account for it. So then we're going to adjust their net income and say, well, you know, in the consolidation, they have these additional assets that need to be depreciated and amortized. So we need to adjust that net income. So then we have it down to $198,000. Okay. I may have one of those wrong. Let me look back at the... Let me look back at what it told us. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. The, the depreciation for the building is $10,000. So I do have something wrong in there. Okay, so $10,000 here. I was thinking they were all 10 years, but the building was a 20-year life. So let me go back up here and adjust that. Okay, now we'll tie out. Because what I am tying to, my double check, is what the parents have recorded as their equity income. So 208000 is what is on the parent's income statement for equity income, and that is what we need to eliminate, and we need to kind of trace back to that. So the 208000 is good. Okay, then we have um, the sub's dividends. And the sub's dividends we find by looking at their statement of retained earnings. 
So their statement of retained earnings tells us that they paid $40,950 to the parent. So we have to account for those also. And then these, at these items here create our C entry. So then now, again, in Chapter 2, we have the A and the E. Now that we're a year later, we have to add the C and the D. But you can kind of map that out in that manner, and then that, again, helps you to build those entries. I'm going to move my camera over to the other side of the board here so that I can do the journal entries for you. So let me see if I can adjust it a little bit more. Okay, because that will be our next step. So ultimately, we're trying to build the consolidated financial statements, which we will do in Excel, and you will have those answers provided to you. I have a PDF file out in Blackboard. But now what I'm going to do is actually just do the, the journal entries. So the first entry I always go back to is our E entry. So let me see if I can go right here. So the E entry is eliminating the equity. So I look back at what I, what I had that I've got. I'm going to debit my common stock, debit my paid in capital, and debit that beginning of the year retained earnings. So that was $130,000, $162,500, and then $1,007,500. And then the credit goes to the equity investment. And the equity, in, and they were, the, I'm sorry, the, the total for the equity of the sub is the 1300000 Okay, then we come down and we do our A entry. So again, I'm looking back at my work. I want to increase the value of the building by 200000 I want to record this license agreement, and that is going to be for $250,000. And then we have a customer list for $300,000. And then we have Goodwill. And then that was $150,000. And then our subtotal is the equity investment. And that is going to be for the 900000 Okay, so we've got two credits to the equity investment. We've eliminated the subs equity. We've added these new assets. And we've offset the equity investment accordingly. Okay, then um, our next entry is going to be our C entry. And I may have to, give me, I think, no, I think I can get it in. Okay, so then we go back to the work and we say, well, we have to eliminate the equity income. The equity income represents the entire sub's income statement. We want to let the whole income statement come in in revenues, cost of goods sold, operating expenses. We want to see the detail, not that line item of equity income. So we have to take that equity income off of the books. So we're going to debit that for... The 208000 which again, I mapped out to you how it was calculated, um, but you also double-check it that it's on the parent's books at that amount. Okay, then we also want to get rid of the subs dividends paid. So then the, um, we're going to credit those because they would be a debit balance right now. So then we credit those, the 40950 Make sure you can see that. Okay, you can. Okay, then the offset goes to equity investment. And the, this I'll have to squeeze in a little bit. But so then if I net those two and I say, okay, well, we had equity income of 208000 that the parent recorded. Then we subtract out the 40950 that the sub actually paid them in dividends. That's $167,050. So that goes to our equity investment. Then our D entry goes to operating expenses. And it records that depreciation and amortization of those acquisition accounting premium assets. So if we total those up, that is $65,000. 
So that's our debit. Again, you know, it would be in depreciation and amortization expense, but on our income statement, it's all just lumped up in operating expenses. But then our credits will go to the specific things. So the building would be in property, plant, and equipment, and that was 10000 Then we have the customer, or sorry, the license agreement, and we'll credit that for 25000 and then finally, the um, customer list for 30000 Okay, so those are all on there. So then these are your four entries. So again, these ones are kind of a carry forward from Chapter 2, except for we've got to factor in beginning of the year. We would also factor it in on these ones. But the beginning of the year on these ones, since it's just one year later, actually is the same value. If we were two or three years later, we'd have to adjust those also. And then this is new, getting rid of the equity income, getting rid of the dividends paid with the offset going to the equity investment, and then recording the depreciation on all of those acquisition and accounting premium assets. Now, the one thing that we'll do here to double check is I'm going to sum up all of my credits to the equity investment. So if I take 1,300,000 from my E entry, add 900,000 from my A entry, and then add $167,050 from my C entry, I get $2,376,050. So then you just want to double check that that's what the parents have in their equity investment account. So I go back to the balance sheet and it's true. So I double check that. I, that means I've properly eliminated everything in my um, equity investment account and that's one of my double check rules. So always remember your double check rules when you're doing the consolidation. We want to make sure we eliminate the equity investment account completely. It should be zero after our consolidating entries. Um, we want to eliminate the equity income completely. That should also be zero after the consolidated entries. And then all of the equity, whether it's the retained earnings, the dividends paid, the common stock, the paid in capital, all of those need to equal the parents. So the parents' equity is the only thing that stays in the consolidated financial statements. The subs is all eliminated. And then also the net, the consolidated net income will also equal the parents' net income. And the reason it does is because the parents have already recorded the subs on their ledger. So the consolidated net income also always equals the parent. So then your next step would be to go ahead and put these into Excel. So then you, you put it into your Excel template, and then you save that, and then I do have the answers out there in Blackboard. Okay, so that is Chapter 3.